So, in case you don't know me, my name's Brian Team, and I'm the co-founder of Joomla. Um, I'm the keeper of secrets. I only speak English, so I apologise. I don't speak any German. Um, if I do talk too quickly or you don't understand me, just wave at me. Um, it won't change how I speak. I won't miraculously speak in German, but I might try to speak a little bit slower. So, the first secret I want to share with you is from 2005. There was a website created called disastersearch.org. Um, it's no longer online, so don't go and check it out. If you remember, exactly 10 years ago, right now, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. This is some of the devastation that it caused. Now, there were over 440,000 people who were displaced, who lost their homes. One of the things that happened back then, there was no single place you could go to to find out were your friends, were your family alive, or where were they. A minister of a church, a very small church, posted to one of his colleagues, one of his um, parishioners, that he wanted a website, if he could have a website that people could list, I'm alive and I'm now staying in this house, that it would be useful for people. This guy then posted on what was now the brand new Joomla forum. It was only uh, 10 days after Joomla was founded. And he posted on the forum and said, can you help me? And very, within three days, very quickly, they got together and they built a website. That website, <clears throat> went on to have a record of over 440,316 people, where they were, that they were safe, sadly also that some had died, and where those bodies could be found. There, were also a, there was also a place there for people to offer jobs, to offer food, to offer clothing, um, because if you remember, the devastation was pretty great. This is the first use of the web in disaster management. There was nobody else out there doing a database of where people were. Now today, Google and Facebook do it. But back in 2005, Joomla led the way and showed how it could be done. So remember that community is more powerful than any individual. In 2006, Sky TV was the major, well, it still is the major satellite broadcaster in the UK and now available in Germany and Italy and throughout the world. In 2006, most people, at least in the UK, did not have broadband at home. They were still using dial-up. Every Sky TV box has a modem in it and had to be connected to the telephone for line for updates. So Sky had an idea that they could serve the web through the TV set. Of course, the TV set wasn't suitable for using the full web, especially as you only had a remote control with numbers. So does anyone remember a specification called WAP? Okay, WAP was a really basic web, interfa web type interface that we had on mobile phones. It was text only, and the menu was driven by numbers. So first, Sky looked at using that, and they realized that really didn't work when you're on a big screen. Of course, not the huge 40-inch high-definition screens that we have today, but still, it didn't work on a big screen. So Sky created a brand new specification called WTVML. You might guess it's Web, TV, and XML all together. And this allowed them to build complete websites, including Amazon and eBay, that would be served over the modem through the websites. Now, the problem Sky had was no one was going to use the service until people were looking at it. No one was going to build websites for it until users were using it. So Sky had this idea, how can we get a large number of websites on day one of our launch really easily? So Sky approached the brand new Joomla and said to us, can we use Joomla to build these websites? 
Sky were already actually using Joomla themselves for their developer portal. So they were really familiar with Joomla. And we had three meetings with Sky, and we looked at it, and actually, theoretically, it could be done that any Joomla website would automatically, with just the use of a, uh, a template and a kind of a plugin, would automatically convert itself and work over Sky TV. So if you're wondering why you've never heard about this, it's because within about six months, everybody started getting broadband. And the idea of this 2400 modem on your TV to serve rubbish websites didn't really become a success. And after three years of 150 people at Sky writing this specification, it never got used. So you have to remember that technology can change very quickly. And it's really important that even today in Joomla, we also adapt and modernize and keep up to date. We've always historically been very good at that. We were the first to adopt responsive. We were the first to adopt MVC. We were the first to adopt multilingual websites. And we mustn't forget that, and we must always keep going. So the logo. Now, yesterday, oh, every logo, or many logo designers, like to hide little secrets inside their logos. This is the FedEx logo. Does anybody know the secret inside this? The arrow. Amazon, does anyone know the secret on the Amazon logo? A to Z. Those are two of the really obvious ones, but there are hundreds more. And of course, as you saw yesterday, Joomla is made up of four Js. Also, four people who are holding hands together. Now, Sarah Watts, the president of OSM, realized that actually inside the middle of the Joomla logo is a heart. But for me, the Joomla logo will always say one thing. When this was first posted on the Joomla forum, we were, everyone was really excited and really liked it. And somebody said, there's just one problem. To me, it looks like four condoms. Now, now that I've told you it looks like four condoms, you think it does. And forevermore, whenever you see that logo, you won't see the heart in the middle, you won't see the four J's, you will just see four condoms. That's my little gift to you. So there is a meaning to everything. Now, in 2008, I got my first broadband connection. It was, I think, I paid the, whatever the rental of the telephone line, they gave me broadband for free. Now, of course, when you get something like broadband for free, it might not be very good. And it wasn't. And I was regularly on the telephone to them, my broadband's not working. Now, the problem is, is that they used a call center in India. And they had a script. And the script went something like, have you tried switching it on and off again? Are you sure you've tried switching it on and off again? Could you please switch it on and off again for me once more? And then you would series more questions, and then they would say, it's not working. I know. <laughs> we need to send you to second level support. This is the telephone number for second level support. So you ring second level support, and they give you some advice. And three hours later, it's not working again. So you ring second level support again. I'm not going to go to the call center. I'm going to go to second level support. I'm clever. I'm not going to waste my time. You could only access the number when they'd given you approval. And the approval only lasted for two hours. So you'd ring back, and it gets redirected to the call center in India. And you'd say, I was speaking to you before. My broadband's not working. And I need to speak to second level support. Yes, sir, no problem at all. Can we just try turning it on and off again? And you had to go through this whole process. Now, after three weeks of this happening, I got a little bit annoyed. So I started, they, I started Googling, trying to find the, a direct number of this second level support place in England. Now, I didn't find it, but I did find a website. The website didn't have a domain name. It just had an IP address. And it just, when I got there, it just had a login screen. 
But one thing I could spot immediately was it was Joomla. Now, this is 2008. Early in 2008, there was Joomla's one and only major security hole. If anyone remembers it, you could actually reset the admin password on anybody's website. Yeah, so it's pretty severe. And that was in Joomla's 1.5.0 to 1.5.5. Now, when I was speaking to having these issues, we were already on 1.5.7. It was all fixed. But I've got this website in front of me that's a Joomla website, and all I've got is a login screen. So I tried. What's the harm in trying? So I did the back tick, I pressed enter, guess what? They hadn't updated their Joomla websites. So I've now got the super admin user account for the website, I log in, and I can see the, the directory of all the support staff. And then I look and I sort, and I find the head of technical departments with a direct telephone number. So I picked up the phone and I dialed it and he goes, hello. I said, yes, I'm having a problem with my broadband. How did you get this number? Never mind that, let me tell you my problem. <laughs> no, 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 how did you get my number? I said, um, you know your website that's on 192. Dot... Yes. How did you see that? Well, it's on the web, so you can see it. <laughs> You know, you don't need just to have a domain name. You, the number, I can see it. Oh, yes, that's right. But it's only got a login screen. I said, yes, but I'm, and I'm logged in. <laughs> um, how have you done that? Well, you're using an outdated, insecure version of Joomla, and I've just reset your super admin password. <laughs> You've hacked our website. I'm calling the police. No. I'm doing you a service because you're running an out-of-date version. I've discovered that, and I'm ringing the head of the technical department to tell him straight away so he can resolve that. OK, OK. I'll re so what is it you wanted me for, anyway? So I tell him my problem. And he says, no, I'm still going to call the police because you've hacked the website. I said, do you have a login to the Joomla website yourself? Of course I do. I'm the head of the technical department. So I said, well, can you log in, assuming you weren't using admin, because I've got that password. <laughs> and he logged in, and I said, um, right, do you know how to use it? Oh, yes, yes. I said, right, can you click on help about credits? So he does. I said, OK, on that page there, there's a list of names. Do you see any name there that you recognize? And he said, ah, Brian Tiemann. Yes, that's me. <laughs> so I do know a little bit about Joomla, and because I've just solved you from a really embarrassing situation, because anybody could have hacked it, could you please fix my broadband? And he says, give me your telephone number, we'll call you back. Within five minutes, the phone went. Is that Mr. Tiemann? Yes, it is. I don't know who you are, but my job is on the line if I don't fix your broadband. I had four engineers at the house for five hours to fix it. <laughs> but the moral of the story is don't forget to upgrade your websites. <laughs> because there'll always be somebody... <laughs> there will always be somebody like me who finds out there's a vulnerability and just tries it. And you may not be lucky enough that you have an honest person like me who rings you up and tells you. I, have, I, I should say I did also do the upgrade for him as well. <laughs> I should also be honest and say that website now has a domain name and it's running Drupal. But that's a different story. <laughs> OK, so the next secret, and this one started in 2009. There is a project called Kiva. Um, it's a micro-lending service. Uh, it's not a Joomla website. It's a global service. But and the concept is you lend small amounts of money to people living in the third world uh, to help start a business or a career or some training, something like that. Now, there's a group of people on here from the who have joined as Joomla. I think there's 30, 37 people. Um, Peter, can you just wave at everybody so everyone knows who Peter is? So Peter is one of the active people 
on this. So if you actually want to know more about it, please see Peter or Roland or Chris Davenport. Um, they're, they're all using it. And as you can see, um, in 2013, um, these 37 people lent five and a half thousand dollars. Um, and again in 2014, 2015, we're not doing so well. And you can see it's been spread all over the world. And there's been 611 loans made by this group of people. And I really encourage you um, to spend just two minutes, go to the website, see what happens, see what you can do. And with the loans we're talking about are like $10, $20, $25. Yeah, it's a very small amount of money, something you know, that we wouldn't even think about doing, uh, spending in an evening out. Um, so I encourage you all to have a look at that. Because once again, community is more powerful than an individual. Now in 2000, for those of you who don't know, my day job, my professional job is Joomla training and Joomla consultancy. In 2011, I got an email that said, we're looking for someone to do some Joomla training. Is that you? And I went, yes. And they said, can I have a telephone number to call you on? So I gave him my number. He said, it's a strange request, this. And he says, do you have GBC3 clearance? And that's a high-level military security clearance in the UK. And I said, no, because actually GBC3 clearance, you have to be a full-time employee to get that. Um, so no consultant will ever have that. It goes with the job, and you lose it afterwards. But I do actually have GBC2. Long story, not very interesting why I have the military clearance. He said, OK, that should be OK. He said, um, so we'd like, you to, we'd like to book you for two days training for five people at our premises. Fine, no problem at all. What is it you're looking to do with Joomla? Can't tell you till you're in the building. OK. So we arranged the date, and I said, well, and where are you? UK might, the UK might only be a small country, but we've got lots of places. And they gave me a train station to go to. And they said, we will collect you there. So I get the train, and it's one of these little train stations with just one platform in the middle of the countryside. And I get off the train, there's nobody there. And I'm standing there, like an idiot, in the freezing cold. It wasn't raining, so that wasn't too bad. Um, ten minutes later, this car arrives, guy gets out, full military uniform. Are you Bryant? Yes. Can I see your ID? Show him my passport. Okay. Takes me to this building. This building was about the size of um, a small family house in the middle of a field. A very big field with big fences all around it. We go into the building, and there's a little man there with his desk, and he says, can I see your ID? And he checks my ID and everything else. And he said, just through that door, sir. So I go through the door, and I'm in a tiny room the size of a toilet with, another, with a button and another little door. And I press the button. It turns out it's a lift, an elevator. Underneath the ground was a seven-floor, thousand-square-foot military complex. I can't tell you where it is, and I can't tell you what it is, but it's a military complex that's hidden underground. There were signs like this everywhere. The ID, the ID badge they gave me had an RFID chip in it. As I walked through the corridors, the RFID chip was obviously showing what level of clearance I had, and all the shutters were coming down on the doors and the windows as I walked past. So the long story short is this top secret military installation is using Joomla for a very bizarre use, which I can't explain. I definitely would have written it in programming language and, or a gaming engine and not a CMS. Um, but when I asked them why are you using Joomla, they said, well, we were told we needed to use a CMS for this. So we've done our research, and by far, Joomla is the best CMS that exists. So I said, that's great news. I mean, unfortunately, you don't need a CMS. But they are still using Joomla, because they do occasionally ring me up and ask me these very cryptic questions, because they're not allowed to tell me everything about the project when I'm not in the building, which makes answering the problem quite difficult. Is it a public site or a private site? Neither. 
<laughs> you won't be able to find it. It's not one that just lives on an IP address, the like talk talk. So as I said, for those of you at my session yesterday, Joomla can be used for absolutely anything. If I was to give you a small clue, it might be to do with early warning military jets and training exercises. Now, 2012, Joomla Day Poland. This is the first Joomla Day in Poland, even though the, the Joomla community in Poland has been going like the German community from day one, but it's the first time they've been able to organize an event. And Radek, Radek Suski was one of the main organizers, and he convinced me to go, and he convinced Nicholas from Akiba Backup to go, and he convinced Ronnie to go. Now, I knew that Ronnie would not actually get up in time for this session. So just in case you didn't know what Ronnie looked like, I thought I would better have a photo of him. So I quickly Googled Ronnie Christensen, and that's who I saw, um, which is not Ronnie. That's Ronnie. <laughs> now, on the first night, the pre-event, we went for dinner with our Polish guests, most of whom didn't speak any English at all. And we finished dinner and we went to this little lounge area and they brought out the vodka. Now, Ronnie has always told everybody in Joomla how much he drinks. Now, Ronnie's a big guy, so I mean, he can just literally drink more than I can just because of his physical size, but he was talking about drinking vast quantities. So the vodka comes out and Radek says to Nicholas and myself, no, don't. So we just sat quietly in the corner with our beer and just kept, in English we say, nursing our beer for the next four hours. Ronnie, however, got into the true spirit of the community. <laughs> and even though these Polish guys didn't speak a word of English, and Ronnie, not surprisingly, didn't speak a word of Polish, they spent the whole evening drinking vodka. Seven bottles of vodka later, we decided it was time to leave and go to bed. Does anyone know that feeling where you're in the nightclub or you're in the bar, you know you've had a good time, you're a little bit merry, but you're not that drunk. But as soon as you get outside and you hit the fresh air, oh boy. Now this is the venue. Um, over here on the right-hand side, that building is where we were drinking. And over here on the left-hand side is the campsite that we were staying at. It's a walk. It's about a 25-minute walk when you're sober. <laughs> Nicholas, Sigrid, Radek and myself were sober. Ronnie was not. We walk out of the building, we get to the ground, and Ronnie's... Like this. So Radek and Nicholas offered to help him. So they were like, Ronnie's like this. Of course, I need to stand on a ch chair. Okay, so obviously Nicholas and Radek are not as tall as Ronnie, and Ronnie's putting all his weight on him. So when Ronnie went like this, Nicholas and Radek went like this. Now Ronnie had forgotten his belt. So as he was walking along, every so often he had to stop and pull his trousers up. And then, as most people do when they're drunk, he realized he needed to have a wee. Now, walking along the side of this lake, we were on a pathway of two meters above the lake with a, a slope like this and a small hedge. And Ronnie decides to go and have a wee in the hedge. So he walks over to the hedge 
And Sigrid, by now, she's looking the other way. You know, she doesn't want to know anything about it. I'm stood there going, he's not. He's not going to. But he did. And he stood there. And he undid his trousers. And he stood there. Oh. And then he went, vroom. <laughs> Two meters down. Now, of course, most good friends would rush to help. But no, we just stood there laughing. <laughs> One hour later, we got Ronnie home to bed. So the moral of the story is culture is local, <laughs> not global. When you say in Denmark that you can drink a lot, that doesn't mean the same as you can drink a lot in Poland. And I have to tell you, at 8.30 the next morning the Polish guys that Ronnie was drinking with were sat working. And at 9.30, they were at the bar and started drinking again. Ronnie arrived at about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Now, coming towards the end now, in 2015, we hear a lot about, is Joomla secure? Can Joomla be hacked? Now, in the UK, we have very few high-profile Joomla websites. But there is one that's pretty high-profile. It's called nationalcrimeagency.gov.uk. So as you can guess, it's a... Oh, there's a typo. It's gov, not geo. Um, as you can guess, it's a government website. Most of the government websites in the UK are WordPress or a custom CMS. This one is Joomla. So who are the National Crime Agency? Um, they could be described as similar to the American FBI. Um, their number one task is cybercrime. So if any website is going to be likely to be attacked, it's the guys who are attacking the hackers. These guys. In 2011, the Lulz Group brought the website down. In 2012, Anonymous brought it down. And just last week, the Lizard Group brought it down. But did they hack the website? No. They were only able to do a DDoS, a denial of service attack, by sending large amounts of traffic. Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that all three of those groups will have tried to hack the website before they started doing a DDoS, because you can do a lot more with a hacked website than just an offline website. And all three of those groups failed. So is Joomla secure? Yeah. So the final one. What does the, na the word Joomla mean? So the traditional story is that Joomla, spelled J-U-M-L-A, is a Swahili word that means all together or a group. In Estonian, it's not a real word, but the word jum means the place. Oh, sorry, the word jum means drink, and la, at the end of a word, means the place. So jum la is the place to drink, or the pub. <laughs> so I thought that one was quite appropriate, but both of those are the wrong answer. So what is the real answer of what Joomla means? There is something called gematra or gematria. Um, it's an ancient Jewish thing which gives every letter in the alphabet a number. You add up the value of the uh, words, gives you a total. So for Joomla, the total is 396. And then you look at other words that also have the value 396. And that gives you the true meaning of the word. So what other words have 396? And are they the real meaning of the word Joomla? So we have family, happy, and freedom kind of 
Some people say that this Gamatra stuff is hocus pocus, but to me, Jumla does mean family, happy, and freedom. So I was thinking, that is the, clearly the real meaning of the word Jumla. Until I looked a little bit further. And so that also, words with the value of 396 include, can be good, alcohol, and padded cell. So if you think that Jumla means a happy family celebrating freedom that can be good with alcohol in a pa and you'll end up in a padded cell, that is the true meaning of the word Jumla. But at the end of the day, Jumla means what you want it to mean. At that point, I'd like to say thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the Jumla day.